Hey everybody, I am back again. I am late to the party because <laughs> there has been an update in the past week and I missed it. First piece of advice, if you turned off and toggled off the automatic launch of Legion Go space, Legion space, which I have, open it periodically so you can get updates. I opened it last night and realized, hey, there's an update, updated it and some really cool features popped up. So. In case you don't go over the release notes, I'm going to share some of this with you and some upcoming things that they have put in the future releases as well. Right off the bat, no, they have not corrected the dead zone issue, so that's a big one for people. The controller one is supposed to be in the next direct update according to the lead on the Legion team. First and foremost, I, I have to say, I was not expecting this, and if you watch my other videos, you know that I love the RGB around the rings, so the coolest feature they have put in this yet is a spiral RGB ring. It changes and goes around in a circle. It is awesome. I've been staring at it the past 24 hours. Go to settings on Legion Space, go to customize, and you will see a fourth effect. Before there was solid blinking in dynamic color. I left it on dynamic color because that was cool. Spiral rainbow is what it is labeled. And you can choose fast or slow, even though it consistently seems to go back to that. It's hard to see on the blue purple spectrum, but on the rest, you can see the effect and the way it just chases around like a dog chasing its tail. Much appreciated. That's something that's so small and so minimal and sure a lot of people won't care about, but that is awesome. Thank you, Lenovo team. All right, let's get into the rest. This is the update 1.0.2.3. I think I got that one right too. Let's check. <laughs> if you want to check your version, just go to general. I'm sure people know that by now, but if you haven't really explored this, which many may not have, or if you don't own yours yet, Here's the current version here, and you can click about to also verify that. Let me go over a few things that I believe I've noticed, although I'm going to have to track back and compare to my old screenshots. When you hit the quick menu, it has changed the look of things. It may be darker. I'm trying to pinpoint the things I noticed right off the bat, and stuff is more condensed into boxes. The first new thing is they have excess tabs here on the left side with more functions. I'll go over that in a moment. The top here, you see this performance section. They have allowed you, and the, it says LBRB. So you can change between the modes now with the bumpers. It has allowed you to customize two modes, and they created their own performance mode and power saving mode, which power saving, I believe, is balanced performance, and performance mode is performance and custom. It toggled on full fan speed in that mode. Speaking of which, tangent here, last night, I clicked on that and noticed it, and that happened, and it toggled full fan, which, you, again, you never hear that noise, ever. I could be wrong, but I swear they have somehow negated the high-pitched sound a bit. I don't know if they adjusted fan curves, if they slowed it down, etc. I don't think it was labeled in the change log, but it seems the high-pitched noise is a little quieter. They have acknowledged it, and they're stating that some units have a high-pitched fan whine, and they're looking into it, but who knows. At at best, maybe they could send us new fans. It can't be hard. To, it's super easy to take these apart, and it really can't be hard to swap the fans. So it'd be nice if it was a fan wine, if they could just send us new ones and we could swap it ourselves. We can't... Taking this apart doesn't void the warranty, at least in the U.S., so that would be nice. If you click Custom, you can set whatever you want. I clicked Performance and Performance. For the most part, I always leave mine in OS Power Mode of Performance and Thermal Mode of Balance if anyone cares to know that. Ah, so the performance mode here, okay. It's supposed to be 30 watt. In their change log, it is 30 watt. I didn't touch this. It, it has been five watts or seven watts, and I thought that was odd, but it's just a glitch, I think. So it's supposed to be 30 watts, performance OS power mode, and full fan speed. So clicking that profile on top there in performance mode will put this thing at full max capacity. Just keep that in mind. I am definitely sticking with the power saving mode. They said this is taking place of the game profiles for now. I haven't gone into the game profiles, but they may bring that back or integrate it somewhere else. In the second section, things have shifted around a little bit. So the frame monitor to, to see if you want the FPS and CPU and all that, I believe that was in the prior section here. I could be wrong, this is off memory. 
but I believe that has switched, which is nice because now I don't have to scroll down to it or whatnot. RSR is now a toggle right here. Instead of having to open Legion Space, go into performance and toggle RSR on right here. I haven't really used it and I haven't seen it do a whole lot, but it, it is there and maybe that means it works now. The third tab is where things have changed again. I think controller vibration was not there. Either way, I noticed it now and it's nice. I played Dying Light, an old game last night, but it's new for this system for me. And I was playing with integer scaling because that's one of those games where you have to actually change the desktop resolution. I'm gonna do that in another video. But the vibration on that felt different. I think they have adjusted the vibration a bit as well. It still feels like buzzing, it's not great, but I believe it's changed a little bit, so that's nice. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but placebo effect, I don't know. Here, where it says controller mode, now you can see view, and it will show you the view of, of what you have it set up as. I think that's new as well. That's kind of cool, and you can have this layout. The newest tab here, which didn't exist before, is the system quick settings. This is really cool because before this, I was going down to the regular Windows menu and sliding up and going through all that. Now you have various functions here, Wi-Fi on off, the screenshot is here, but you also have the hotkeys of doing the back button and the front button here. Escape is nice when certain games you can't get out of. <laughs> and the virtual keyboard is my favorite one so far. Normally you had to go to the bottom menu and tap it to get it to pop up. It pops up automatically at times, but not always. So this is nice that they put that in there. The window D shortcut here is really great because that will minimize the game while you're in the quick menu. That's awesome because that's half the problem when you're trying to get to the bottom thing, you're sliding it around and it's not always easy on every game and every different interface you're using. The other thing is the productivity mode now has a set external display as primary. If you're having this thing docked and you use an external display all the time, it will allow you to just automatically have that when you plug it in. I believe that's what this is. One other thing I noticed that I don't think was in the change log nor stated, but I believe I'm correct. When you exit the quick menu now, so let me go here to the to the second to the last tab, right? And I'll exit the quick menu. I'll bring the quick menu back. It's still there. I think before it used to always default back to the top. I don't know how I feel about that because sometimes it's nice to get to this first menu. I wish they'd have an option to let us choose, but if you like the memory feature, that's cool for you. If you're constantly going to one quick menu, that's also a nice benefit. So I'm indifferent about that, but I believe that is changed. Also on the quick menu, if you notice, the controller power and the power is on the top no matter where you go in the tabs. That's really cool as well. So now you can see the controller charge. If you happen to use FPS mode, the right one may be dead all the time. <laughs> and now you can check it here, so that's a nice feature. The other thing they labeled is general optimizations and bug fixes. I think they've improved Legion Space a bit. It no longer scrolls at what appeared to be 10 to 15 FPS. It's closer to my eyes, maybe 24 FPS now, 30 FPS. It just feels smoother. I think they've also tweaked it a little bit. Maybe not, but they've been doing all around improvements. So here, there, we don't know exactly, but I think they have improved the interface fluidity a bit of Legion space. They notated a bug that people were reporting that you had to plug in the power to switch from 144 Hertz to 60. I wasn't noticing that, but that doesn't mean I was not having that i just didn't notice it and i i never switched to 60 hertz but they said they have fixed that bug now yesterday i don't know if it was just the game i restarted the whole unit twice but the quick menu and legion space hardware keys would not function yesterday i had a fresh boot they would not work to bring it up what I had to do was plug in the power and unplug it again, and all of a sudden it worked. So my assumption is that they introduced another bug <laughs> by trying to fix that bug. I could be wrong, and it could be a one-time coincidental thing. I will have to see if I repeat it again, but last night I did experience that. It is the first time I really experienced a bug with this system that was something I couldn't fix or get around. In fact, really, that's really the only notable thing I've experienced. There is lag in the quick menu sometimes in some games, but it does eventually pop up. Other than that, I'm not worried about it because they seem to update things fairly on time and, and their, their response is great. So I'm not worried about it, but just to note that if you're having that same experience as me, maybe that's the issue. If you're having problems, try plugging in power and unplugging it or plugging it in and leaving it. That may fix the issue. <laughs> also, they added support for several languages. I should note Dutch, Norwegian, Swedish, Hungarian, Czech, Romanian, and Slovak. So 
all those people with those languages who wanted support for that, you got it. That's great. Another thing I noticed that could have been, so I did skip, I believe, a previous update. So maybe I missed this, but it looks like they changed the quick hotkey menu. And it looks like increased power consumption by one watt, decreased by one watt has been added. I don't recall that. I think they have changed this a bit. So check your hotkeys again and see if there's anything else in there that's been added that you weren't aware of, or maybe you missed, or maybe I'm crazy. So <laughs> just check it and see if there's anything else that may help you. One other thing is that I had my first drop and probably my only drop. I tend to take care of things, but this fell off the desk the other day because it, a cable was stuck under it and I didn't see and it bounced, but it hit carpet. Everything was fine, it survived, nothing cracked, and I just wanted to say that I think the hardware is pretty sturdy because it was kind of a hard fall and it bounced and rolled and hit another cabinet. All is good, so maybe I just got lucky. The Legion button and right stick is, or RS, I think that's right stick, is supposed to be mapped to the Xbox button or they're gonna coincide on the next update. So they're gonna introduce a couple things so they say on the next update coming soon, probably in the end of December, early January. And that is going to focus on the joystick dead zones. That's a huge one. I've been using Steam input to get around that as I stated in my full review. You can check that if you'd like, it's toward the end. They are going to add a trackpad vibration switch. This has a tiny haptic feedback, almost unnoticeable, but it looks like they're going to add a switch to turn that off in case it bothers people. Maybe they'll add a feature to turn it up. That would be nice too. They also mentioned they're going to have lighting fixes and the right controller duplication thing in the menu fixed. Not sure exactly what people are experiencing with that, but they're going to update that. That's in the change log if you wanna check out the exact wording. A big one coming in late December, early January is they are going to they're going to implement BIOS firmware updates in Legion space instead of having to do it manually via getting it on AMD's or Lenovo's website. So that is going to be a huge thing. That's what I thought they did in the get go. And that's why I, I was late to the party again, trying to find the updates for the drivers and whatnot. So I'm very much looking forward to that as well. The other thing, they have a couple of things they implemented or they're going to do with the BIOS in the near future early January possibly. But the other thing I'm looking forward to is six gigabytes for the UMA buffer, the VRAM setting. Right now it's three, four, and eight. Eight is too much. Six I think will be the optimal one for many games. So you may bounce between four and six. I'm currently at four and I don't see a huge difference between three, but I, I do see much more stability in four than using eight. I think it will depend on the game, but eight just takes too much from the other from the splitting the RAM and a lot of games utilize that instead of this. So that being said, the six gigabytes is probably the magic number and I'm looking forward to getting access to that, which should be January. The V28 BIOS coming up as well will have access to fan curves. I preemptively thought that was coming and it looks like it is. So that should be nice for people who are having fan pitch noise problems and maybe that can tone it down a bit among other things as well as adjusting the dead zones on the joysticks in the next update in the following update after that they're going to address dead zones in the triggers and possibly the fps mode they're also going to implement dpi settings in the trackpad in the next update in january as well so the auto function for the UMA buffer, which is probably the most ideal one for people. I think the ROG has that now and it's solved issues for a lot of things. That's not coming in the next V28 BIOS update. That is coming in the future, they're working on it, but six, six gigabytes will be it for now. The next, next update, the tentative ones, they're going to add functionality to change the frequency of the RAM. That may help people tune things better. They're going to have a charging speed optimization mode so it can charge for better or worse on different modes, which should be nice because this charge is so slow so often. So that should be something to look forward to as well. They are going to address that. Basically when you're under high loads and the charging seems to be slow, it's especially docked for some people I'm hearing, then this should be a welcomed benefit for that because being able to optimize the charging speed for high, higher speed charging is gonna be helpful for everything. Anyone wondering about the drivers for AMD, they are in beta right now for the next update. Apparently they'll be released sometime in mid to late December. So those are coming too. They probably won't have the auto implementation for Legion Space yet to download. So just check Lenovo's Go page periodically and see if those are ready to go. I'm still on the 11.7 ones. 
personally, but maybe other people are in the beta ones. I don't know. There's more stuff after that, but I will leave it there and put something else in the next review <laughs> or the next update. One last thing I will mention in this video is I did an unboxing of this dock. This is the iVenki. Name cannot get any more ridiculous than that, but that is it. And luckily it's on black on the front, so it's really hard to see. <laughs> but it is a quality dock. It has a lot of things. They're all USB 3.0, which is nice. And a lot of these are mixed with USB 2.0 or strictly US 2.0. The power in is 100 watts and it does charge this while playing HDMI 2.0 and ethernet. And it reaches both ports, unlike every other Steam Deck dock out there, which seems to be the only ones listed at the moment for this. I, I've i had a couple of comments saying, why didn't Lenovo make a dock? I agree. They, they missed an opportunity there when this released because how expensive could R&D be on a dock for this? But I thought I heard one was in the works. I replied to that comment and my assumption is that they probably were given a budget and they wanted to see how this would fare in the market. And I believe it's doing pretty well. So hopefully in that case, they'll start adding more accessories for us. This dock is really cool and it's solid, it's sturdy, it's not going to damage this at all and you can pretty much leave this as is. The only thing I'd be worried about in docks is if it's impeding the fan vents but it's not even close to that. And sure you could leave it on the kickstand and use a hub, I agree. This is more of a very long term dock but it's also nice to just set it down and go leaving the whole top clear, extra ports and it looks really good from the front. I'm pretty happy with this. I just, I was picking it up on a whim and I thought, oh, let me check it out. I didn't know if it would work or not. I did my research and all of them said that they were, the cable was just too short for this because this is on the opposite side of the Steam Deck, but this one works on both top and bottom. It is a go-to, it's a win-win. If you're looking at docks that have that fan built into it, just don't. It, it's, those really do nothing. In fact, I've, I've read studies where they make it worse on the actual fan function. So I, I don't know. I'm not saying they they are all bad, but from my experience in trying to find some for even the PlayStations back in the day or computers, they just don't work. So stick with this one, it works. I will put a link in the description and you can check it out yourself. I don't plan on doing every update, but I, I saw the rings on this one and I thought, ah, I gotta tell people because maybe they don't know and they did the same thing I did and they just never opened Legion Space. The rings are so cool, but there are lots of other quality of life improvements and they're making changes, it's awesome. So I hope that helped you out. And if there are any questions, drop me a comment. I'm a bit tired, so I may have missed some things. I will do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more and have an awesome week. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.